Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. Welcome to my new planting bed. You can see it's not quite finished, but I have this side of it uh, covered up. I've got all the grass dug up. I've uh, laid down compost and triple mix. Uh, underneath the compost and triple mix, I laid down a layer of newspaper, about um, 10 sheets thick. Uh, and that's just to suppress any of the grass or weeds from coming back. So all I did is I, I pulled up the, the grass in uh, kind of chunks and I just flipped it over. That'll retain all of the um, good topsoil that was here. It will retain any or microorganisms that were living here because I had really healthy grass. I have pretty healthy soil in this area. And as the grass um, decomposes, it'll break down and just add to the nutrients in the soil. Um, I know there's a big thing with uh, people just putting cardboard down over their grass and then composting over top of that, uh, or putting compost over top of that and mulching in that. Um, and I've tried that. I just, I haven't had good um, outcomes with that. And I find that the newspaper takes a couple of years to break down here. So I have this short area of planting or else I have to dig a hole through the paper and then the grass is growing up through that hole and the newspaper uh, through the cardboard and the cardboard it stinks as it rots down um, and I don't know maybe I'm just doing something wrong but I just find that I, I don't prefer that method now I did put cardboard down underneath my paving path uh, because I won't need to be planting through it uh, it should, I think, stay damper underneath the stones, so it should break down faster. That's my thinking anyways. Um, so I'll, I'm just, I'm experimenting with that. We'll see which area uh, keeps the grass out longer, I guess. Hey, Buster. You saw me sitting down, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Okay, you need to move over. You need to back up. Um, so I do have some cardboard down here, but most of what I'm using is like newspapers and flyers. Uh, so I've got the one half done. I'm hoping to make this a lot of um, cut flowers and um, flowers that'll attract pollinators. Uh, and I may add in shrubs later on, but for this year, a lot of things that I'm putting in the ground will be um, annual in my area, meaning that they'll come up flower set seed and die completely off uh, in one season as opposed to perennials which will come up you know they they grow they they flower they set seed but they're when they die back they just die down to their the ground and then the roots are still good underground and they'll come back the next spring but most of the plants i put in here will be annual in my area i'm in zone three saskatchewan canada uh, so we get like around minus 35 in the winter so a lot of things don't grow here so some of these plants might uh, be perennial for you in your area but uh, here they they just won't make it now they might set seed lay seed and i might be lucky enough to have some of them come back from seed the next year and that would be great but doing uh with a more mostly annual planting for one year will give me a really good idea of how i want heights and textures and things spread through here and where if anywhere I want some shrubs and I can kind of adjust things that way so that's my plan for this year uh, I have a lot of plants that I've grown from seed and they're sitting in their pots and they really want to get planted especially these little Camelot mix foxgloves uh, these are still in their tiny little pack I do have some that I've bumped up these are Dalmatian Dalmatian peach I think can't quite read the tag under the ground there um, so you can see the size difference all I mean they are two different varieties but oh, here these are Camelot mix so here's the same variety the only difference is these have been bumped up and these haven't they were seeded the same time so it really does make a difference if you're bumping things up in the pots so these really want to get out of these tiny little pots and get planted I had planted some foxgloves in this general area in the original flower bed, which is only about this deep behind me there. Uh, so I thought just in case any come back from seed, it doesn't look like they're going to, but I thought it would be nice to just continue them out this way. Um, I haven't seen any signs of com any coming up from seed and I may kind of tuck a few back into that bed just to try and marry the two together. 
but my main goal for this morning is to get these uh, foxgloves planted out. I have, what do I have? Eight, 14, five, I have 19 foxglove to get planted in here. I do have some grasses, so, and uh, some amobium, and behind me I have some rebecchia. So I'll be slowly filling in the space. We're supposed to be getting some rain um, <clears throat> coming up next week. So I'd like to get a lot of these plants into the ground and then they can be a lot happier in the ground than in their trays and the rain will help to settle them in. And then I have mulch. So once I get this kind of area planted up, then I will come back in with mulch and mulch over it all. So the Camelot Mixed Foxglove is a bit taller foxglove. Um, has a variety of color to it that you can get, hence the mix. Um, it'll get close to around three to four feet tall is what they call for. Now I found mine last year, probably only got about two feet tall and they're supposed to be spaced about two feet apart. And again, I didn't find they needed that close of a spacing. So I don't think I'll be doing quite the spacing that they call for um, on the packages. And uh, the Dalmatian peach is uh, a foxglove that is kind of a peachy, I, almost corally color. I've never grown it, this one before, but that's from the pictures. That's what I get out of it. And it has kind of a spotting down the throat. Um, and this one is supposed to get close to the same size as the Camelot, but just a little, slightly bit smaller in stature, like closer to around three feet tall and 18 inches wide. Uh, so again, I think I'm going to actually go because these are both only um, hardy to about zone four, so they're not going to get larger and spread out um, so much in my area here. So I think I'm just going to put them about a foot apart and go with that to see, to, to see how it works. I don't think it'll hurt being as an annual plant, growing them as an annual plant to put them that little bit closer together. So I'm just going to be digging a hole and plunking them in. So I want to try and work these in to this back area. Now I didn't bring a trowel because the ground here is fairly soft. So hopefully I can get, I don't need a very big space to put them. I do have an allium here. It's just about to bloom. I don't know if you can see that. And I have some crocuses uh, here as well. But they'll be almost done. There's a little bit of iris in the back. It'll come up and it's not a very tall iris. So I'm not sure it might get crowded out by the foxglove, but it's not my favorite iris patch to have right there. So I don't mind if the foxglove winds up shading it out a little bit. I have more of that iris in other places where it looks better in the yard. Um, ah, there's a rogue clematis seed just coming up here. But I'm just gonna try and start them back into the existing old flower bed a little bit. And that way they should, it'll look a little bit more natural like this space was here, hopefully. So there it is. Nice roots on it. Ready to get planted though. This is a daylily right here. Uh, Stella Doro, I believe it's it's a small flowered yellow one with finer leaves. I think that's the variety. So it'll hold its own with the fox glove, no problem. That's all the Camelot mix put in there. I just need to get the Dalmatian peach going. Let's kind of put them in a random kind of grouping there. 
Okay, so I have all the Camelot mix kind of all through there, and then I put the Dalmatian peach up just a little bit closer to the walkway because it is supposed to be just a little bit smaller. And then I decided to take this, um, it's marketed as pet grass. Uh, I've tried to do some research on it. I think it's Sativa Avens, I think is the name for it, uh, which is basically oats. Um, it's supposed to be meant like it's safe for like cats and dogs not to, to munch on and they like to do that. My dog actually chewed on one. I have two trays. I'm not sure which tray it was. This one doesn't look like it's been chewed on, but I don't, I don't have the other tray here to see if it does. Uh, so I'm just going to plant little groupings of this. Hopefully I don't wind up with wild oats throughout my whole garden. But I thought the height might be kind of interesting. And just the, you know, the grassy kind of sway. It looks like it doesn't spool out from the bottom a whole lot. I mean, there was one seed in each one. They're very root bound. I need to get planted. Um, but you can see the like it's spooled out a little bit, but it hasn't done a lot. Now maybe once it's out of these little pots, it will. But I think I'll put them in little groups of three, and then uh, we'll see. We'll see what they do. See if it's. I don't know. We'll find out if it's a mistake or uh, something that uh, is worth trying. So. I put a group here and I have another group back here. I think you can see that. So that'll be interesting. I think I'll just, I think I'll just dot those oat grass um, just kind of around randomly with the other, the other plants. Now you can see the, the foxglove kind of swoops around behind the oat grass. So when I plant the obricia, I can kind of put one in, kind of mi mixed in with the, the Fox live a little bit and bring some up around here. So it's not just giant chunks. They're kind of somewhat mixed together a little bit. Hopefully is my plan when I'm doing this. I hope you've enjoyed seeing uh, this flower bed just start to come together here and seeing the, uh, the foxglove and the oak grass uh, go into the ground. I'm really excited to get this space going and plant it up. I have a lot of plants that I've started from seed that I want to put in this area. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of planting videos over here. Let me know in the comments down below if you started your planting and what you're planting out in your flower beds this year. I'd love to hear from you. What's your favorite cut flower to grow? I was watering these in and realized I didn't tell you the light requirements for these plants and you might want to know that. So uh, the foxglove uh, prefers full to part sun. So you know, basically four, four hours plus of sun. The more sun they get, the better, unless you live in a really, really hot area. So it kind of looks like it might be a real dappled shade area here right now, but it's early in the morning and my neighbor's fence and trees are, are uh, shading the sun from coming up on the east there. But so they'll get full sun uh, as the sun comes around in the afternoon. They'll get plenty of sun through the day. Uh, and it'll be a nice uh, hot spot. So I'll definitely be making sure I get some mulch down on them as soon as I can to take care of that. And the oat grass uh, is full sun. So it'll get that over here too. So they'll be really happy with that. Uh, as for watering, just, you know, average, average watering, you know, good draining soil, but they, they don't want to be sitting dry, either these plants. So we'll get them watered up. Uh, this is good draining soil here. Uh, it holds the water, but it doesn't get waterlogged. There is a base of clay down deep, but these roots, being that they're just annuals, shouldn't, shouldn't hit that, so we should be okay with that. Full to part sun, average water needs, and uh, they need some space, but I find in my climate anyways, they don't need as much space as, uh, as the packages say. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.